So hello, in this episode, we're gonna be tackling a huge topic. How will labour policies affect UK investor landlords? We're gonna take a deep dive into the key policy changes and what it might mean for you. Let's get into it. Okay, All so right. should, should we start off with the, obvious, the, the, the current state of the, uh, the property market? You're not even going to mention we're gonna, in a new YouTube studio. You're not even going to mention that. Well, Looking good, good, huh? Looking good. It is looking nice. We looking are in better. a, yeah, we're trying it to make... It feels like we're, we're half decorated. We, you know, do a few yeah. more things, but um, the UK property market is definitely facing a, uh, a lot of changes right now. Yeah, uh, well, challenges maybe, challenges. you want to call it. Yeah. So over a million homes are needed. There's a big shortage of housing. Mm -hmm. um, there's affordability problems. So you've got prices going up, interest rates have been up they're coming back down we think yep. um, it's been very difficult for first-time buyers it's been very difficult for people who maybe wanted to move to a larger house uh, felt they needed to for whatever reason and mm -hmm. couldn't because they're just the mortgage rates yep. um, and then you've got the old cost of living crisis stagnant wages you know people struggling to save up for deposits and yeah. you know afford the mortgage payments basically I think sat in, in between those two points <clears> the <throat> general affordability prices of, of, of houses are going up mm -hmm. and the affordability is the fact that interest rates are going up as well which that's a key contribution yeah. to, to both of those things and is very pertinent to landlords and investors um, the government says, the new Labour government says, the property market is in urgent need of intervention to provide mm. solutions. So then that's got people scared. I mean, you talk to experienced property investor landlords, mm -hmm. you know, there's a large percentage of that group of people that think Labour are going to make their lives hell, they're going to clamp down on this, clamp down on that, tax yeah. here, tax there, um, make it really difficult for landlords. I, just, I personally don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. So that's, what we, that's, that's what we case. need to talk about today. Yeah, what yeah, what yeah. could happen? <clears throat> what are the proposed changes? We could changes? sit and doom monger and like, you know, there's a big, there's a market yeah. for doom mongering, isn't there, on the internet? Well, well, I just there, don't think it's the case. Is there a market for good news? Yeah, well, it's, it is, it's but people don't want to hear it. It's a lot smaller than the doom monger. Yeah, so we're, sure. we're in the market for good news. I think there's a lot of positives to be taken. Mm. I really do. Mm. I, I just, I don't think any government comes out and wants to sort of smash things up straight away or you know even in their first term in their first four years yeah. um they need to they need positive news stories really yep they really do i think um but well, not only do, do they not want to um i think lots of the rhetoric that comes out during an election is way over so way over over mm. to the left or the right depending on yeah. what you're saying and then actually when it comes to delivering it you can't stray too far because fiscal policy gets exactly. in the way yeah. the democratic mechanism gets in the way that says no that law gets knocked yeah. back and um and, and the truth is that both main parties are pretty centrist yeah, they, oh, they might talk about yeah, it in yeah, a yeah. different way of course but when it comes 100%. to delivering what they're delivering yeah. i think that you could expect more of the same for a long i know lots of people time. that um didn't vote for labor because they said keir starmer's a tory <laughs> 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 you can't yeah well, anyway yeah. but i okay. think personally there's two two things that are really positive and that is um, the, the talk about relaxation of planning, mm -hmm. um, especially from converting a one house into two flats, there was a lot of restrictions on that and the, there's talk of that being relaxed. Um, and their pledge to build lots of new homes, they are going to be good things for property investors. And especially if you're already a landlord or an investor, um, new houses bring up the value of other houses close to them. It's unique to property. Though. Yeah, yeah. If, if you it's great. have a... Um, a street of average houses and people start to build nicer houses or do their houses up, the value of your house goes up without anything mm. else happening. Um, I think underpinning this, talking <clears> about <throat> Labour's proposed policies, how they might affect the market, um, Labour are going for growth. Okay? Yeah. Any any um, government was going to have to do that. Liz Trust tried to do that. <laughs> yeah. Just didn't present it or package it up. Well. But the whole thing was that's an unfunded yeah. commitment because you're relying on X, Y, and Z growth. Um, and it was unfunded and it, was, it wasn't it was carefully walked, worked through and it was also halfway through a parliamentary term. So now Labour is coming in. Underpinning it is we need to grow. Um, I think 
One of the policies that landlords will be thinking of, anybody's thinking of, is this idea that tax is going to go up. Um, and how will that affect the market mm. or general general sentiment? I think people very quickly get over that. Tax was always going to have to go up. Tax went up quite a lot under the Tories. Yeah. Just all of them. COVID meant we spent a load of money. It was out of the blue. It was a lot of money. You know, yeah. like like a we war need to make it back. Like a war. Yeah, yeah. Money, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it needed to be paid back. My accountant <clears throat> Ali told me four years ago. This is going to cost everybody a little bit. Mm. If you're slightly wealthier, it'll cost you slightly more. Get used to it. It's a couple of percentage points. The way that a Labour policy, any government, would deliver a policy that that makes that workable is to say, right, okay, we're not paying that amount of money out of the same pie. We're growing the pie so we can afford it. And mm. that, relaxing planning rules, regulations, letting business get going again. It sounds like a Tory policy, but... Um, it's got to have to be part of the plan. Yeah, so I think that, that underpins everything. That, that, that's yep. uh, new I houses. Think we're yeah. going to start seeing, um, I don't know, newer mortgage types or return to mm -hmm. previous um, mortgage options like 0% deposits. There's stuff coming already. Um, for people, if you're renting, then you don't need a deposit, but you yeah. need to be able to show that how you can afford the rent at that level and yeah. the mortgage, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5%. Um, I think we... Definitely seeing the rates drop for buy-to-let mortgages. They've come down. Yeah. They're going to come down. The base rate dropped last... Well, a couple well, of weeks last ago. Year, but last month, let, say, Let's not month, forget yeah. that's not a policy, strictly no, speaking. No, but, no, no, you know, no. Of course, you know, it's non-political, but of, of, of course interest rates are going to have to come down now yeah. because um, you, you, we need to get the economy moving again and, yeah. and growing to pay back the, the costs and, and of we course. do that through taxes. So, um, yep. I, I, I'd say, yeah, that, that is it's, it's definitely true. Um, but I would say that quite a few of these things that we're going to mention here, they are new Labour policies, only by virtue of the fact that Labour are new. These aren't new policies. <laughs> yeah. These are old Tory policies. Yeah. These were coming in no matter what. Yeah, so totally. in terms of the change, exactly, yeah, is this so Labour true. or is this, yeah, this yeah. Is just something that needed to happen? You know? Yeah, good um, point. So another thing people are worried yeah. about is um, the introduction of rent control. That seems like a very Labour policy. Mm. Um, Maybe it would come in London first. Oh, it's only going to come in where rents have already London, gone completely anywhere. over the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you only have to hear some of the, the prices people have to pay down there. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. And probably, I'd, I'd have said that's a good thing. Well, to be honest. Got, again, yeah, another well, positive thing. Another yeah. positive thing. Yeah. I've, I've got, I've, I have not, I've, I've got to say, I haven't done loads and loads of research on this, but there's a model that the, uh, the, there's lots of places where rent control has come in around the world. The closest one to us is, is places in Scotland. And some things that happen, or have been shown to happen, two, two, things, two main things really. When rent control comes in, it doesn't come in overnight, it gets flagged up. And what that tends to do, every single landlord says, right, it's coming in on the 1st of January. That whole year leading up to it, let's say you've got a year's notice, everybody starts putting their rents up as landlords mm. because they think... Yeah, you know it's coming. You know it's yeah. coming. Yeah. And actually that increases the rents to a... It pushes the new market level. You've got mm. cost pull inflation and cost push inflation. And that's pushing the price. So it just is. There you go. Yeah. It's not some external factor. It's like, I'm just pushing it up because I need to get it in. So that kind of backfires in, the, in a way. Uh, from a landlord's point of view, it means you've got higher rents, higher yields. But from a tenant's point of view, that backfires. The other thing that happens, and this is something that's not widely understood because people hear rent controls, it's like, how dare you interfere with the free market, whatever. It doesn't mean you can never put your rent up again. It means that you can only put it up to market rent. Sure. And <clears throat> I'll ask you a question. How many landlords do you know that self-manage their properties yeah. have their rent at market rent? Yeah. It's virtually none. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's shocking. Yeah. So yeah. Well, the biggest thing that we come across when, we, when, when uh, an investor landlord comes to us, they've, they've got a property already, uh, we've got a process that we go through to optimise their rent. Oh, we're, we're a letting agent, by the way. We should, we should, we should mention that sometimes to new viewers, <laughs> new, new, new listeners. We know what we're talking about a little yeah. bit. Uh, and, um, yeah, and one of the biggest things is, should we just put your rent up to market level? Yeah. What rent controls mean that people do that more regularly? So actually, rent control, yeah. no big deal. Yeah. Um, it just means you're definitely going to be at market rent if they come in at all. And there's quite a lot of pushback at them coming in. So. True. Um, should we start talking about what this actually means for landlords? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people think landlords are selling up, um, getting out of mm. property, putting their money into other things. I can tell you as someone who works with landlords, I source property for them, 
manage renovations for landlords. Um, the, there are there are the older generation people who've been doing this for 20, 30 years thinking, you know what, I kind of think I've had my fun with it now. I've made my money. I'm going to start slowing down, retiring. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a whole new breed of investor now yeah. coming through. There's um, They're sensing the, an opportunity. The, that's, yeah, that's what I, that's yeah. The, you've got the... If uh, I want to put it in a nutshell, what yeah. the, 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 the People who are get, have got to maybe 40 and they've they've made some money for the first mm-hmm. time properly. Um, they've got a young family or someone who's a bit a little bit older and they've got kids kind of teenagers they've met their that 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 gap yeah. of people who've made yeah. some money they're looking to put it into property because they can still see opportunities there mm. um, there's a stability to it that, that you don't get with crypto and stocks and shares and things the, the numbers um, back that up as well um, cool. remember that there's an invest tech you can probably google it invest tech 2024 there's a report that said that now more invest tech deal with high net worth clients and yeah. they're seeing a shift that they, they their clients are wanting to put property yeah, and yeah, money yeah. into bricks and mortar the, more um, than they did do over the last five years. Yeah, yeah you, either you've got the hedge funds, big money, yep. piling into property. And this one of the reasons, it's one of the side effects of professionalising the market and is making those older landlords want to leave. Mm-hmm. The Newbury don't care about that. No, they don't know any other. They don't know, don't know any different. They're coming in with a different mindset. If you are older and selling up for the right reason, it's the right thing to do. It gets to yeah, a point when I, I will sell, never sell. Um, and then recently I've started selling some. You know? yeah, it, it seemed like, like they've, they've gone up in value to the point where I can deploy that capital somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, see, you, actually, you're I, not I've selling up. Not selling you, up. You're yeah. selling some to buy elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but equally, just getting into the mindset of actually a property doesn't have to be forever. I can release it. I mean, you look at the chunks of capital that come in, which at my age I don't need. Um, but you know, 10, 20 years from now, I think one of we hear it from landlords all the time. I'm selling up. I'm, mm. I'm, a, I'm in my 60s, 70s. Now is the time, and now might be the time. Especially, mm. you see all you'd these. Probably be retiring if you were still working, right? You see so, all yeah. these, exactly. You'd be, mm. if you, you probably are working, yeah. retiring, but yeah, selling. Yeah, yeah. It just makes sense. Exactly. So there's, there's a new breed of landlords. Um, you, you mentioned professionalisation. I think we're talking about you know, what it means for landlords. I think landlords are going to get used to, and if you're a new landlord, like you say, you'll never know any different. Mm. Higher levels of regulation. We, as a letting agent, we already really, really well aware of it. So. Um, For the first time since I've been doing this, mm. you know, sourcing, managing, investing in property myself, in the last 12 months is the first time where I've brought in clients that are younger than me. Um, and I'm only 42. Yeah, you are, yeah. But we've got some clients now that are younger than me. We've got some clients my own age. We have different conversations. You're going to be you an know. old boy. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll be soon. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that those those investors, whether they are... The big boys, like the, what, the hedge funds, you can mm. see, and, and wealthy private um, money is coming in more now because they're timing the market. They can see an opportunity. Um, what was the, the, the you know, it's the B3 or 4 when others agree yeah. to with that. So, yeah, most, most investors want to invest when everything feels safe and comfortable. Of course. Every, everybody's piling in, everything's going up. That's the wrong time to invest. The, the right time mm-hmm. to invest is when there's a bit of uncertainty. And right now, timing. I, I wrote something down as I go get, build back and get 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 ready for the boom. I don't know where it is. Maybe somewhere down here. That surely now, after what we've been through here, interest rates doing what they're doing, mm-hmm. affordability being at the place where it's at, landlords getting out because of regulation. But actually, we'll talk about regulation. It's not the end of the world at all. No. Um, now is the time where you're at the ground floor of the elevator and it's just going to go up. And I think yep. that lots of people piling in, whether they're new investors, old money, they sense that there's an opportunity in the market now and there's a price point opportunity as well. Things are cheap, actually, Definitely. relatively. And right now today, because of supply and demand, yep. you can you can find a cheap house Oh my as God. Well. We're, we're still sourcing some properties under 40 grand purchase price in yeah. some areas of the country. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Um, just touch on regulation a little bit. Yeah, I was so going to say, about, so uh, that's what, another what thing. It? It's another thing that people are scared of. It's easy to make clickbait videos about... No fault of it. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Lots of red tape. Yep. Um, you know, that was all talked about a year and a half ago under the other government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, this is not a new policy. Yeah, yeah this is not new. Um, um, it's it's going to come in now and it'll be, this is a Labour thing. And but it was, it was, one it was of the fun. reasons they want to bring in a no fault eviction was to protect tenants who have bad landlords 
that want to evict their tenant for complaining because the house isn't up to standard. Yeah. Good, bring yeah. that in then, bring good. The yeah. House should be up to standard. Um, professionalize, it's all about professionalizing the industry for me. And if, and I've seen it happen in Nottingham where they brought in the licensing, the older landlords complained, the younger guys just went, oh, it's part and parcel of part it. Part and parcel of it. Um, I sp sp with an I've spoken to the council. I've seen the figures of how many houses have had to be um, upgraded. Mm -hmm because of um, council visits, and guess what's happened? It's increased the value of all the houses, because yeah. Yeah. they've made them better. Standards, so there's always a positive to be taken. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are areas where we've invested where you can see, I wouldn't necessarily say older landlords, although I guess they, they would generally be, but bad landlords yeah. were f almost yeah, yeah. forced to sell up. I mean, like the council didn't say put this on the market, but no. it was, in some cases, you can't rent this thing out anymore. It's now, you know, you need to do all this list of work to get it ready. Um, and they weren't prepared to put that money in. Interestingly, then when we buy it for what we buy it for, we do we have to do that work, otherwise you can't rent it out. Yeah. It then becomes worth more than those two figures put together. And like you say, the house prices exactly. go up. So exactly. new breed of landlords, I think it's it, we've got to say this will deter small landlords. Yeah. It was, some landlords will sell up because of this. I think that's part of the, part the, of the thinking. Yeah. yeah, the thinking behind it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, if if you a big percentage of your... Um, population, voters, live in the private rented sector. Most landlords own only one house and aren't really invested in it in terms of no. investing the money in it, but in terms of their, the way they're thinking about it, it's a bit of a sideline and a hobby, then you're not going to have a, a, a good housing stock and happy voters. Indeed. So, you know, it's easy to get that fixed. Um, so yeah, we don't see that as a problem. As a letting agent, we have to be able to deal with that day in, day out. 45 times a day, yeah. a click of a button, 100% compliance <coughs> without any, and, and yeah. you can very Definitely. easily, I say very easily. Before we if wrap up actually, before easy. we wrap up, I just want to mention that we are mm. a letting agent, we are a property sourcer, we do manage renovations. If you want to talk to me about any of those things, managing your house, finding you more houses, optimizing your portfolio, introductions to accountants, bookkeepers, you, you name it, yeah, yeah. selfless plug. Um, follow the link in the bio wherever you're, you know, listening to this, following this, um, and you can book a call with me, and I'll, I'll and I can help you. Um, but you know, let's let's wrap it up. Wrap so it up. conclusion, the sort of, yeah, the conclusion. So I think we we made some notes. We prepared a little bit. You know, Labour's policies could radically reshape the UK property market, and we think good for the better. Mm. Could, by the way, but yeah. they could do it for the better. Um, stay informed. You know, as a, an investor landlord, just stay informed and take advantage of the changes. Don't get, you know, don't get brought down by the doom mongering. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, the, I, think, I think a key thing that underpins all that is everybody's going to be paying more tax. You'll get used to it very quickly because everything's relative. Yeah. And the only way that that gets paid for is growth. Any government would have to say we've got to grow out of this and um, get ready for the next boom in the next five or seven years, or whatever that is, yeah. that's clearly on the, on the cards. The Midlands and the North of England is going to see big property price increases, um, big capital growth, especially in the North East where it's all, you know, it's still very cheap up there. Um, you see a lot of people interested in getting, in, getting property in that area. Mm -hmm. um, there are always, always opportunities in the property yeah. market. I think you, you said don't, uh, and I'm trying to be succinct in the, in the conclusion, but your point about um, a new breed of investors, don't get bogged down in the doom mongering, and you can, and if you're an older landlord, you tend to more, mm -hmm. like just anecdotally <clears throat> what you hear. If you come in fresh-minded, then you'll just see the growth opportunity and all this. Mm. If you were at all in the, I'm a bit down in the dumps and gloom about this, just try and think like a 35-year-old. Yeah. Because you're probably 55. <laughs> yeah. you know? like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a bit simplistic, kind of. Uh, so, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments um, anything that you found interesting, any questions, anything that you disagree or agree with us, what you think of Labour's policies. Um, how do you see them affecting uh, the market for landlord investors? Yeah, so, thanks a lot. Hit like, hit subscribe, and um, feel free to get in touch. Thanks for listening.